Hi class, uh, here we're going to go over the week two project which involves qualitative simulation. Uh, we're going to use a coin flipping app to simulate what happens in the real world when we take samples. So we're going to use StatCrunch's coin flipping applet to simulate flipping a coin to see whether certain results are unlikely or not. Uh, we can adjust the probability that the coin lands on heads. So instead of a 50-50 proposition, we can investigate whether, say, 60% of all COS students are female, or whether 40% of all COS students own an iPhone. Basically, we'll have a fake coin that can land on heads whatever percentage of the time we want. And then we can use that to simulate some real-world situations. Uh, we're also going to be able to adjust the number of coins flipped, which in our cases will represent the sample size. To start the applet, you want to click on Open Stack Crunch, and then click on the Stack Crunch button, Applets, Simulation, Coin Flipping. All right, here we are in Stack Crunch. I'm going to show you how to open the applet first. We click on Open Stack Crunch, and the spreadsheet will show up. Then I want you to click on Stack Crunch, Applets. Simulation, coin flipping. All right, so let's take a look at an example. Suppose we're told that 11% of all people are left-handed. We go out and take a survey of 250 people, and we find that 18 of them are left-handed. What we want to figure out is, is it an unusual event that 18 or fewer people are left-handed in a sample of 250 people if the 11% number is valid. Right. Let's talk about setting up the applet. We're going to set the probability of heads to be 0.11 because we are told that 11% of all people are left-handed. We're going to set the number of coins to be 250 because our sample size is 250. Go ahead and click on Compute and the applet will be set up for you. Okay, now we're going to set up the applet. I wanted to change probability of heads to be 0.11 because 11% of the people are left-handed, or so we're told. The number of coins is going to be 250 because our sample size was 250, and click on Compute to start the applet. Center that. There it is. Now to run the applet, we're interested in determining whether 18 or fewer left-handed people is an unusual event. In the Stack Crunch window, where it says Event, I want you to change the sign to be less than or equal to, and I want you to change the number of heads to be 18. Less than or equal to 18 means 18 or less, or 18 or fewer. Okay. Now I want you to click on the button that says 1000 runs, and you're going to get to watch Stack Crunch run 1,000 simulations of flipping a coin 250 times and listing the number of heads for each trial. So Stack Crunch will flip 250 coins, count the number of heads. That will be like a sample of 250 people and counting the number that were left-handed, if the 11% is valid. Then it's going to do it again and again 1,000 times. Okay, uh, we're interested in 18 or fewer, so I'm going to change the number of heads to 18, and I'm going to change that sign to be less than or equal to. Now I'm going to uh, click on 1,000 runs here at the top of the screen, and that's going to simulate flipping 250 coins 1,000 different times. Here we go. In red, we see the bars that represent 18 or fewer heads. And if I look up to the upper right corner, that tells me what proportion were 18 or fewer. And here that's 0 0.027 or 2.7%. So since there were 18 or fewer left-handed people less than 5% of the time, we consider this to be an unusual event. Anything that happens less than 5% of the time in this course is considered unusual. So what that suggests to me is that the claim that the percentage of people who are left-handed 
is going to actually be below 11%, lower than it was claimed. Uh, two things that we also need to find are the lower critical value and the upper critical value. To find the lower critical value, I want you to leave the event as less than or equal to. And I want you to keep increasing the number of heads until the proportion goes above 0.05 or 5%. The value of the number of heads, the value of x that uh, occurs just before you go over 5% is the lower critical value. And basically what that tells us is where the unusual results begin for x or fewer successes. Now for the upper critical value, all right, let's talk about how to find the lower critical value. What I want to do here is find the biggest value for the number of heads, or x, that I can find that comes the closest to 5%, 0.05, without going over. Uh, so I'm going to start increasing the number of heads. I'll try 19 and push enter. 0.048, that's pretty close to 5%. Uh, I'll go one more. I'll change 19 to 20. Now I'm way over. So 19, let me try that again, is the critical value. That means anything that was 19 or lower, that number or fewer would be considered an unusual event because it's 5% or it's lower than 5% of the time. We're going to do that in the opposite order. Uh, we're going to change the event to greater than or equal to, and then we're going to keep dropping the number of x until the number of heads when the proportion goes above 5% shows up. The value of x that we hit right before that happens is the upper critical value. And that tells us where the unusual results begin on the high side. Okay, now we'll talk about the upper critical value. First thing we need to do is change the less than or equal to to greater than or equal to. And I want to come as close to 5% as possible so I'm going to need a number out here. I'm going to begin at 40. Uh, you can use a little trial, trial and error on your own. Uh, when I put in 40, I get 0.01. So I need a lower value. So I'm going to start going to the left. I'm going to change 40 to 39. I get 2.1%. I'm going to change it to 38. I get 3.4%. I'm going to change it to 37. I get 4.5%. I'm going to change it to 36, and I'm over 5%. So that last value that worked, 37, is our critical value. 37 or more would be an unusual event, and any number that was higher than 37 would be an unusual event. 38 or more, 39 or more, and so on. So we find the right-hand critical value by changing it to greater than or equal to, and lowering the value of the number of heads until the proportion comes as close to 0.05 as we can get. So in the project, what can change for you? Well, first, the probability of heads is going to change each time. In each part of the project, you'll be given a different population percentage. 60% are female, 40% have an iPhone, 18% eat eggs in the morning. Whatever it may be, that probability is going to change. Also, the number of coins that you're going to be using will change because each problem will have its own sample size. And then finally, the event that we're interested in will be given within the problem. So where I mentioned 18 or fewer left-handed people, you might see 70 or fewer females, 90 or more people own an iPhone, etc., etc.